two, one. Anywhere I'm at, turn the city up. I can flip a dial to a million. I don't like to brag, but I'm really on three, two, one. Anywhere I'm at, turn the city up. Three, two, one. I don't like to brag, but I'm really on three. G'day, Glenn Morris here from the Smart Energy Lab, and today I'm going to talk about sodium ion. Check this out. I didn't uh, misname that. Sodium, not lithium. Sodium ion. What's that all about? Well, I've been testing this battery here for about a year. It was supplied by Nation Energy, a uh, distributor of the Ferredium uh, sodium ion battery here in Australia. But even better, I had the CEO. I had Jim Quinn, <laughs> the CEO of Ferredium here for a day. And oh, he's a great guy. And I interviewed him in the studio. So <laughs> let's check him out. Cool. Well, uh, welcome, Jim. <laughs> it's good Thank to have you. you here. Yeah. So just like to tell everyone that uh, we're going to be talking about a new tech in terms of batteries here with Jim. But uh, first, Jim, tell me a bit about yourself. So how, how did you get into being what, the CEO of Ferradium? Uh, Fran, oh, that's a good question. I've been in mostly in the semiconductor industry for 20 plus years. Uh, started out in Palo Alto, California, my first company, serial entrepreneur, and had a couple of companies. I sold my first company to a company in Germany, and then I did a couple other startups startups in Sweden and, and France. And yeah, I, had the, I think it was interesting because it was any of the businesses I was in previously, my kids never understood what I did. You know, it was just all this, this, this technology. Batteries is the first time my kids actually understand what I do. You know, they get in the car and they need to charge their phone is the first thing they do. So I think I was always attracted to a technology and a product that would be really ubiquitous that everybody would, would want and need and have um, and something that people understood. And, and batteries is something we all understand. Right. So you've been through the <coughs> valley of death many times. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yes, exactly. But um, ferradian has been around for what, since 2010? Yes, yeah, since 2010. So not I've, really a startup. No, well, you know, overnight success takes 10 years. Right? Yeah, you're right. So <laughs> that, that's true. But yeah, I joined, uh, I've been CEO from Ferradian for about five years now. Yeah. So I've been partway through. When I first came in, Ferradian was really a discovery factory, if you will. It mm -hmm. was, uh, I was probably one of the first non-PhDs to be brought into the company. Company right. at the time, and we were really developed really a minefield of IP around sodium ion technology and really to, to bring up the performance of the cell chemistry, you know, so it would be competitive with lithium ion technology right. in those so, early stages. So you mentioned the S word, <coughs> sodium. Now, sodium. I mean, that's yes. kind of like the big thing here. Yes. We're not talking about yet another lithium ion battery, no, right? No. So why sodium? Well, sodium, I think, was really overlooked, you know, by a lot of, um, you know, scientists and, and lithium kind of became a bit of a runaway train and, and there was a lot of work. And, you know, I think sodium became, it was a bit of a white space in terms of IP. Lithium was really convoluted. There was a lot of IP around lithium and it made it harder to, to bring a new technology. And and actually, Ferradian started in a little bit of a different way. You know, I come from Silicon Valley where you have an idea, you start to put it together, then you go see capital. In Ferradian, it was investors came to our co-founders and basically said, look, we got a lot of battery companies coming to us, but none of them are exciting to invest in. It's either too expensive or uh, it doesn't have enough performance or, um, and, you know, come up with a technology we can invest in, something for the future. And so that's really where the, the engineers and scientists looked into it and really felt sodium was overlooked and had a really good, unique opportunity. And I think today, you know, things go from gradual to suddenly. Uh, years ago, you had explained sodium ion. Now everybody is interested in sodium ion. So it's changed quite a bit in just the, the last four or five years. Right. So um, in terms of battery technology, how long has sodium ion been around for? Sodium ion has been, been around probably as long as lithium. Right. Um, but all of the effort and resources really got focused on lithium. I think there was a lot of you know, let's say um, unfounded uh, prejudices towards sodium, where it sits on the periodic table. Mm. Oh, it's heavier, and and you know, but there's such a small amount of sodium and lithium actually in the cells in general that it's not a massive issue. But yeah. um, so there was, you know, there was some concerns about energy density. How much energy density can you get out of sodium compared to lithium? You know, and and so I think those were just some of the some of the discriminating factors against sodium at the time. So where do we dig up sodium? 
Oh, sodium's everywhere. I mean, you know, if you do desalination, right? You were in Australia, you do desalination. They don't know what to do with the salt, right? We got to get rid of this somehow. Um, it's on your table. It's sodium chloride. It's basically available. It's not limited like lithium is into particular countries. So Australia has... So we don't, have, we don't need yeah. sodium mines. You don't need sodium mines. You can harvest sodium in a way compared wow. to mining for, for lithium as well. Yeah. So so that makes it very much, uh, much more environmentally friendly technology. If you look at lithium, it takes 2.2 million liters of lithium to produce one ton of, of battery material. 2.2 wow. million liters of water to produce one ton of lithium. Wow. And sodium, you don't have that because it's not brined in the same way that you do it with lithium. So it's a, certainly a much more environmentally friendly technology. And, and, you know, in a lot of countries like in Chile, it's using 65% of the nation's water reserves. Oh my gosh. Wow. For the amount of lithium that they're getting out Whereas of. Whereas it's actually a waste product uh, in desalination. It's a byproduct. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 Cool. Now, you know, why would you choose to use uh, sodium instead of lithium for making batteries? Well, it's interesting because <clears throat> if you look at a sodium ion battery compared to lithium, we have there's no lithium, right? <laughs> there's no cobalt. There's right. no copper and why, there's no why, graphite. Why are those last three important? No cobalt, no graphite, well, no, no carbon, well, uh, they're, no copper. They're all, for, all for different reasons. You know, cobalt is uh, informally mined. It comes from really one region in the Congo. Informally mined is sort of a euphemism for child labor. Right. It's really, um, it's, it's horrible environmentally from a society standpoint and from human rights standpoint. It's a real issue. Cobalt does give you good range. It gives you, you know, there's, there's reasons why it's in a battery, but but from an environmental and society reasons, we really want to get away from that. Yeah, we, you know, with with lithium, I already mentioned the amount of water that's required to produce lithium. You have to mine it. Um, it's limited in a certain countries. Uh, of course, Australia is one of those countries as well. But you know, ideally, if you're looking towards energy security, you want to uh, you want to have a you know indigenous supply chain, and sodium provides that opportunity globally. It's not limited to any particular countries. Right, you can get sodium in India, you can get it in Germany, you can get it in the UK, and you can get it in Australia. So what about graphite? Why no graphite? Graphite is also interesting. First of all, graphite's also mined. Mm -hmm. um, graphite is controlled by China. It's, it's, it has, I don't know the exact total, but it's a significant percentage of the, of the worldwide graphite is in China, mm. and it's controlled by China, which is, which is fine if you're Chinese. But uh, we use a much more environmentally uh, technology. We use a hard carbon. A hard carbon comes from um, coconut shells. You're kidding. Uh, it could be walnut shells as well. <laughs> Uh, we've even looked at the difference in sulfur between coconut shells in one country versus another country. And so it's a much more sustainable, much more environmentally friendly uh, technology. And it also has a lot of performance advantages over graphite as well and lithium uh, from a technology standpoint. And copper? Why no copper? Uh, copper's expensive. Copper's prices are volatile. Also, copper is uh, where you start getting in some of the thermal issues and dendrite issues and safety issues with lithium. And so the, we, uh, with, with sodium ion and ferronium, we use a hard carbon anode versus the graphite. This enables us to have a broader selection of electrolyte material, which enables us to have a low volatility, high flash point electrolyte, so it's more thermally stable. You don't have the thermal runaway with sodium ion that you would get with lithium, because as you, you're, as you well know, you have a lot of batteries here. So what happens is in certain temperatures, especially cold temperatures, you know the electrolyte will start dissolving the separator and, and start causing dendrites into the copper, and that's what will catch fire and create fire. And, and that's a big concern now and I, I think we're seeing this more and more globally is the safety issue mm, concerns mm. with lithium ion. So can I use a sodium ion battery in the same way I use a lithium ion battery? Pretty much, yes and no. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I would say it's uh, what we call a highly differentiated chemistry, mm -hmm. but not disruptive from a manufacturing standpoint. So if I just step back for a moment, so we manufacture it on the same lines as lithium. That's what makes it differentiated, oh. not disruptive. Mm -hmm. So we stand on the shoulders of lithium. So all that knowledge, all that expertise, yeah. all those last few decades of, of yep. manufacturing know-how is already embedded in our cells. In fact, if you worked in a factory and, and were producing cells, the only difference you would see is you would see aluminum. I'm American, so I say aluminum. I don't say aluminum. There's another reason for that, which I won't go into. <laughs> but, uh, and so that would be the only difference. You wouldn't see copper on the electrodes on the cells being produced, but it would look and feel pretty much like lithium. So from that perspective, it, it is quite quite similar. But there are some differences. as it, We can go down to zero volt. Zero volts. 
which Whoa. is a really unique feature yeah. to sodium ion. And it's very unique to ferradian in particular because we have a patent on that worldwide. We even have a patent on that in China. And so this enables us to transport, store, and uh, do everything related to the zero volt. So if you know when you fly, yeah, they always say, say, take out your batteries. Batteries. And, and, and I'll just go, oh, it's okay, so, uh, officer, it's sodium. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they'll go, <laughs> well, that's, that's always the challenge, right? The regulations <laughs> always come afterwards, right? So you don't need UL to transport them by air. It's different. It's like transporting a bag of electrolyte because right. we can totally short the cells. Yeah. You cannot do that with lithium. Yes. If you totally discharge a lithium battery, you cannot safely recharge. It. Yes, yes. So there always has that 30, 40% state of charge in a lithium battery, whereas we can go completely down to zero. Can volts. you leave them at zero? We've left them for more than six months. Yes. And there's no degradation in performance or, okay. or anything at all. So it's really death for a lithium battery. A, yeah. You know, oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So it's a really uh, it's a unique feature to sodium ion. And as I said, with Ferradian, yes. uh, having that patent on that worldwide is quite quite compelling as well. So operator intervention, you get a lot of brush fires out in certain places. We had them in California. You have them out here in in, uh, in Australia as well. As you can completely power down your your system, and so it's in a much safer thing if you have to evacuate or anything as well. Yes. Operator intervention if someone needs to do something, power it down, install it, and then you can power it back up again. Yeah, so if, it's a big plus for transport, being able to transport a zero energy battery. Yes. Yeah. What applications do you see for sodium ion? If it's big, heavy, stand still, move slower, goes fast, it's a good application for <laughs> sodium ion technology. Everything. Yeah, so yeah, exactly. I mean, the technology has legs. Um, you know, even though we're 10 years, as I say, all overnight successes yeah. uh, come for 10 <laughs> years, right? You know, you, you do have to focus. And, yeah. and our focus is on stationary energy storage mm -hmm. at the moment. But the technology has legs. And certainly we're working two, three wheelers, uh, mobility applications. We're seeing more and more of sodium moving into mobility applications. Anywhere where you start to see LFP technology, you'll start to see sodium. So there's a lot of similarities in terms of energy density, mm. and then you have some of the added safety features to it. What about cost? Cost, well, you know, we don't have copper, we don't have lithium, we don't have cobalt, we don't have those expensive raw materials. Uh -huh. So it's an inherently a lower cost technology. It's also much more environmentally friendly and it's safer for all of those reasons there. So it is it is lower cost in, in volumes. And that's really the challenge. It's really not so much technology innovation, although the technology has legs and will continue to increase energy density and cycle life and so forth. But, you know, it's really about building up the supply chain and being able to scale it and at that kind of volume because that brings costs down. Wow. So a hot topic at the moment mm -hmm. is recycling. Um, yeah. You know, solar panels, we've got loads of them coming off roofs in Australia and they're, they're e-waste and they're difficult <clears> to recycle. <throat> what about uh, sodium ion batteries? Sodium, you can get a lot more out of the cathode from a sodium than you can out of a lithium from mm -hmm. that perspective, although we don't have the expensive raw materials, more recoverable. Mm -hmm. You know, you want to recycle and you're down to zero volt, that's a lot safer bringing it into a recyclable mm -hmm. facility. Mm -hmm. But essentially, you recycle it in the same way you would a lithium battery. Because I've seen one strategy strategy for lithium recycling is to do it underwater because of the, yeah. the, the, the explosion problem. Yeah, that, that is a bit of a problem. <laughs> you, you, yeah, so it's going to be a challenge, I think, yeah. for, for lithium as, as, as it continues to expand in the markets and mm. how do you recover that or urban mining, as mm. I've heard it called a lot. But sodium, sodium, you know, you can take it down to zero volt, you can recover more aspects of it. So, yeah. It's, cool. It's very similar. Now. So as you know, I've got one here. Yeah. Um, thank yeah. you. That's been yeah. very interesting. It's actually yeah. running these lights right now. Yeah. So let's hope it keeps working. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> if it's a blackout, guys, we know it's uh, sodium. But no, it's been working very, very well. Um, but it's a it's a residential kind of scale unit, yeah. I think 10 kilowatt hours. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Um, do you have plans for, for larger units? Absolutely. We're already we're already on track for scaling up the technology. We have, you know, as I said, we're looking at stationary energy storage. So mm -hmm. these are everything from, from telecom to residential energy storage, commercial and industrial. But we're also moving to large scale best systems. Mm -hmm. So these are, you know, three, four megawatt, 1500 volt type systems uh, as well. Right. Because I'm, I'm coming back to the, the safety issues, it's something that I get asked a lot when it comes to CNI. <clears throat> when you're putting large battery systems, you know, in shipping containers on the side of supermarkets, etc. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, I think that's going to be a, a really strong angle is the, the safety. Yeah. 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 And, and the safety is, is really twofold. It is the zero mm. volt. And so from installing it and mm. all of that. But it because of, as I said, the electrolyte that we use, because of the hard carbon anode that we use, all of those things that operates at a safer temperature and 
in, in uh, voltage range than, than you would see with lithium in that respect. So is there any difference in terms of uh, minimum temperature for charging compared to lithium? Because, I mean, lithium doesn't like to be cold. No, we work we work well in the cold. Oh, it's right. actually quite cold here today. Uh, you have some heat on in here, but uh, as you've probably already experienced, it works quite well in the cold. Right, so it's cold yeah. tolerant. Yes, yeah. absolutely. So do you see it making it into the EV market? Absolutely. Te- the technology's got legs in a number of areas. You know, is in terms of applications, you know, we, we stayed away as a startup, we stayed away from EV because of the design cycles. It's a crowded space. It's, you know, it's a, it's a massive investment to really build up a new technology mm. and, and put it into an EV. So our focus has been more on stationary energy storage. But as we scale, and, and now we have a, a, a champion behind Ferradian, which we haven't mentioned yet, and that is Reliance Industries that acquired us about two years ago. It's one of the largest companies in the world, and we're scaling up and building a gigafactory. And, Whoa. and so these things will bring the cost down, but it also enables us to be able to, you know, look at adjacent markets and yes. look at mobility markets as well. Okay, so you mentioned Reliance. Uh, <coughs> so they are already a manufacturer of batteries? Reliance is a massive consumer of batteries. Oh, right. I mean, they're, they're on demand, just, uh, you know, uh, Reliance Industries, maybe not as well known in Australia mm. or in the UK or in the US. Uh, one of the largest companies in the world, bigger than CATL, bigger wow. than Shell. Wow. Um, <laughs> and they're building four gigafactories right now in India. Their own, their own requirements are in the multiple terawatts. Uh, largest oil refinery business in the world, it's the largest retail business in the world, largest telecom company in the world, and now going all in in renewable energy. Oh, what a and, partner. And, <laughs> yeah, and I think that's really important. When you have a new technology like Ferradian or, mm. or sodium ion, ultimately you need someone but to stand behind and say, look, we're willing to bet a gigafactory on that. We're willing to be able to do this. Right. And this is a really unique position for Ferradian and, and to find that champion uh, with Mukesh Ambani and Reliance Industries to, to, to do that. So you're not just making one cell at a time at Sheffield? No, no, we're, we're, <laughs> no we're working scaling. over time. Yeah, yeah, no. Yeah. <laughs> Greetings, no. <laughs> wow, it's uh, it's really exciting. In fact, I've I've been you know pitching sodium to people who've come here because I see all of the things you just said is where we need to go. You know, uh, environmental safety mm-hmm. and not resource scarce. So exactly. you ticked a whole yeah. bunch of and, boxes and, there. And, and cost. ultimately lower cost. Uh, lower cost is always going to be positive. always up there. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Okay. Well, it's been great talking to you, Jim. Yeah. Um, thanks very much. And I'm look, I'm enjoying the light that your Ferradian battery is producing. <laughs> I'm enjoying the heat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> very cool. good. Glenn, okay. thank you so much. Really a pleasure to be here. See Appreciate ya. it. G'day, Glenn Morris here from the Smart Energy Lab. And I've been talking to Jim Quinn from the CEO of Ferradian, but now I've got Tom here from Nation Energy. Now, Tom, what's the relationship with Ferradian? Thanks, Glenn. Uh, So Nation Energy is the exclusive distributor for the Ferradian product in Australia. Uh, It's also a joint venture between an Australian company and Ferradian, so 50-50 joint venture. So we we hold the exclusive rights for Southeast Asia and Oceania for the product and looking to commercialise it in the near future. So, Tom, are you just a box mover? No, so we've got a whole team behind us, uh, as well as the engineering team that's here today. Um, And as we bring on the commercial product in the middle of the year, we'll be recruiting more people to help out as support and technical support for the product. Right. So we will be able to buy them this year. Correct. So um, the middle of the year, July, the first units arrive just in small volume, and then we'll build from there over the next two years. Now, I've got a unit here. Will they look the same? or is No. It- so the first product we're doing is a 48-volt rack mount unit, which mm. I think I've discussed with you in the past. It'll be 5.8 kilowatt hours, sort of 4.4 available. Um, and it'll be certified with a number of inverters we're working with at the moment. Is that a 2RU, 3RU form factor? 4RU at the moment. 4RU, okay. 4RU, correct. Right. Because, yeah, so they're they're, they're quite chunky. Yes. How heavy are they? Uh, They're about 55 kilos. That's okay. Yeah. Two two strong ladies. Two strong, (laughs) correct. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I'm excited. I mean, I've been using the Ferradian battery here for, oh, I don't know, it must be nearly a year now. Nearly a year, correct. Yeah, yeah. And it's running these lights still, so So it's working. That's great. It's working. So I look forward to the commercialisation. Fantastic. Um, Thanks, Glenn. (laughs) Okay. Thanks, Tom. Cheers. Well, wasn't that cool? Yep, you learned a lot about sodium ion, why it's such a great product, and why it has a great future. Also, um, thanks a lot to Tom Gregson from uh, Nation Energy for supplying uh, the lab with a R&D uh, version of the sodium ion battery. So yeah, I think you'll be able to buy them pretty soon. So check out Nation Energy. <laughs> See ya.